Rev up your engines. Manuel 0027. How often do you change transmission fluid on a car? And how can you check if it needs some in a car that doesn't have the transmission measuring stick? Years ago, many of the manufacturers starting getting rid of the transmission dipstick so you can't check it with a dipstick anymore. Now as for when you need to change it, a lot of the manufacturers now call it a lifetime fluid, which is a lunk of baloney. I asked an engineer once, what do you mean by lifetime fluid? He says, well the fluid is good for the lifetime of the transmission. And then I said, well how long is the lifetime of the transmission? I said the warranty is like 60,000 miles. Well that's the way it goes, you know. <laughs> you still need to change it. In most cars, I would still change the fluid every 60 to 80,000 miles. You want clean fluid. But here's the thing, you can't check it yourself anymore. Now uh, all cars are different, they all have different things, but on most of them. I have to use a high level scan tool. I have to plug it in and then do some bi-directional testing and it'll tell you if the fluid's low or not. For your own peace of mind, most cars look under the transmission. If it's all dry and then later you look and it's still all dry, then it's still full because it can only leak out. And if it's not leaking, it's still full. In many of the cars, it's a very complex, multi-phased, like in a BMW, it's like an hour job of putting the computer and checking, running it, adding a little here, driving it around. It's a royal pain in the butt. You just want to check it every once in a while by looking under the transmission. If it's all dry, then it should still be full. Nick Nick says, Scotty, what do you think about the new BMW twin turbo inline six engines in terms of power and reliability? Okay, the thing about BMW is their inline six cylinder engines were always excellent engines. The Germans usually make pretty good engines. If you turbocharge them, of course you get more power. That's the downside of an inline six is that it doesn't put out the power like a V6 does. So most people went the V6 away from inline, plus the inlines are longer and they take up more space. You might say, oh Scotty always poo poos BMW. I poo poo the cars as a general because they're over engineered, a lot of plastic crap that breaks on them, but the engines themselves are really solidly built. They're very powerful. There's nothing wrong with the engine. It's the entire car and the money that they cost, it's way too high that I'm against in those things. Years ago, I had customers in the 70s and 80s had those uh, straight six cylinder BMWs. Some of them had 300,000 miles on it, and the engines had never been touched, and they were still running strong. Kane Godparents, <laughs> there's a name for you. What do you think about frame rebuilding? It's all rusted out where the shocks are on my client's 2004 Jeep GC. Okay, here's the problem when frames rust, rust just eats everything up from the inside out. To really rebuild a frame, if you're going to replace it, you got to take the whole body off the car, bolt everything off the frame, and put it back together. It's generally not worth the money on a vehicle to do something that's 15 years old. If one section is rotten away, like you say where the shocks are, a good welder can cut off the rotten part, weld on new steel. Realize that welding, the weld is actually stronger than the steel it's welding together. So a good welder, where he joins it together, that's stronger than the rest of the car. So it can be done if you want to spend the time and energy. And if it's only a tiny part, if the whole thing's rotten, forget it. It's not worth fixing because there's just too many pieces that are going to have to be replaced. And like I say, doing the whole frame costs more than most vehicles are worth. The only people that do that are people that are doing like frame off restorations of a class a car well. They'll take it completely apart and either fix the frame or buy another frame and put it all back in. And that's very expensive to do. Zach 4F says, my wife has an 04 Ford Focus. I changed the spark plugs and wires. Now the car is a rough idle and hard to accelerate out of first gear. I don't see the wires arching at night. Any thoughts? Okay, when you start disturbing things, just going in there and unplugging the wires, putting in new spark plugs, and putting them back on, there's lots of things that can be disturbed. You said you changed the wires. One, did you use quality wires? If you use the cheapest ones you could buy at the most discount auto parts store, I had that bite me in the rear end one time. It was the wires, they were bad. So if you got cheap wires, try other wires. Could just be the wires are bad. But if it's got a distributor cap on it, change the cap because the wires plug into the cap. If it got a bad coil, just unplug in the spark plug wire and plug in another one, the coil could get cracked. A lot of times it's something that you either did directly or indirectly touched and broke something. I see that a lot when a car's that old because there's so many wires and plastic pieces that can be brittle. So check that and check vacuum lines to see if you crack the plastic line that's sucking air. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.